contrast paint. A revolutionary paint in this day and age, going from base, wash, layer, highlight, to one thick coat over a white undercoat or a grey undercoat or a bone undercoat or, or zenithial primer in a miniature then going over with contrast or slap chop as pretty much every YouTuber is talking about these days. It's like it's it's completely changed the way most people paint miniatures whether that's for new painters actually having the courage to put some colour on a model and go and play with their toys or whether a more advanced painter is using them for more glazing techniques like wet blending etc. But what I find contrast paints really really good for is using them the completely wrong way that they are sold for because they're so thin and they're so highly pigmented they're really really good in an airbrush now you might have used the contrast in an airbrush before then that's totally fine but if you've never considered it or you're considering getting an airbrush but you've only got contrast paints and this might be the video for you we're going to be working on this 3d printed miniature from proxywars.us who are sponsoring this video and i'm going to tell you like in my workflow how I use contrast paints. These videos, I never really have a plan, so I'm just gonna just YOLO it and we'll see what we can work out. But to start off, this is a 3D printed miniature. I'm gonna stick it to a base and I'm gonna have the, the not slam, the Eternity Watcher on some cork and I'm gonna put the, um, the, the cradle chair, floaty chair thing onto a paint handle. And when working with 3D printed miniatures, you just super glue them together. They're just like resin miniatures, which is really fine. But if you want some really good gap filling, I recommend UV resin. This is really good because it's a very similar material to what it's, it's been printed with or been, uh, been manufactured with. But it's also super easy to apply with just an old brush by just using it for a gap fill and then using the torch to harden it. And it gets a really, really strong bond, which is great for repairs. And it's great for like really so getting it solid on that base. So I'm preparing the miniature as I would any miniature. I'm getting it uh, based up right now. And then I'm going to prime it in black. And rather than doing slap chop or doing zenithial, I'm going to do a little bit of both with like an underpainting technique basically stolen from Dana Howell, where we're going to prime it black, Zenethiol highlight it white using white ink, and then we're going to dry brush it white as well to get all of the edges and catch all the catch all the edges because spraying contrast is very similar to using contrast from a brush. The, 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 because we're applying it so thin, the highlights are going to be retained even after applying the colour. And then I'm going to use null noil to wash it. So we've got this almost like sketchbook monochrome miniature before we actually apply any colour to it. So the dark, dark recesses are dark and the light is points are light as well. And now we're actually going to start applying colour. As I said, like contrasts are really, really thin and highly pigmented. So they're almost like inks or glazers. So what you can do is you can apply this straight from the airbrush. Um, at this point, I have thinned it with a little bit of water. But we just take it, take our time and apply the apply the colour really, really gently. Apply the contrast to the airbrush really gently. And the more that you apply the contrast into a certain place, the deeper the colour is going to be. So if you want like a filter colour, you want a very hint of a yellow, for example, we can just do one quick light coat. Whereas if we keep applying the colour into the same place, it'll get deeper and deeper. And as you can see, when you do apply contrast from a paintbrush over a flat base coat, you do get like this wishy-washy, like unnatural effects. And it just, it looks really blotchy. Whereas when you apply it through an airbrush, you don't get as much contrast. You don't get the deep, deep recesses as you would if you applied it straight from the pot. But what you do get is a super smooth finish that is so soft and it's got such a nice gradient if you take your time it is super good and it's really really good when you want to start mixing colors or again applying a gradient from one color to another like i'm doing from yellow to green here for the yellow stomach and the green skin as you can see like that, that that soft blend is gorgeous just because it's so so thin and we're just taking our time and it's essentially just like one pass and you can deepen those colors with another layer and you're never going to get like really blotchiness it's not, it's not going to clog up details and that the, the if we keep applying really thin coats, it's just going to like really up that uh, intensity of the colour. But it's also going to be such a smooth transition from where we've gone from. And again, if we start adding other colours and doing the same thing, we can go from this really bright yellow and then we can go to a really deep green. And we're actually working in reverse what you'd normally see from airbrushing like normally you'd start from the dark and then you start painting your highlights but what we've actually done is started from the lightest color and and blended our way to the deepest color on the back which is kind of awkward because if you do mess up then it's gonna be really hard to get that color back but what it gives you is just a smooth transition and because contrast paints are so thin they are they are high intensity but they are very translucent that if you try painting a lighter color over the darker color then you just it just it just doesn't work because it's because it's too thin. You're just going to get a filter over the top, which is not what we want. We, so we've got to work from light to dark rather than dark to light, which can be a bit confusing, but you get used to it. 
So while I'm blocking in those colours, let me tell you about today's sponsor. I've worked with Proxy Wars for a long, long time. Starting out with advertising their base ring squad markers, which are like an absolute godsend when playing tournaments or just general games just to know who's in which squad they are beautiful. But they also create 3D proxy models that you can use in any tabletop game, such as Warhammer 40k or Age of Sigma. They are perfect standings either because you want cheaper models to represent what you're actually playing on the tabletop, an alternate pose, or in the case of this one, like an alternate style of miniature, which is like completely different to the original whilst still having the vibe of you kind of know what it is in this case i'm painting an eternity watcher from their lost temple line which is a great proxy or stand-in for a seraphon slan obviously it's a proxy it's not a direct copy it's just got a very similar vibe to it which is great like third party artists creating miniatures like this is always fun and always cool to have such a varying amount of miniatures available to the consumer and this one has a completely different feel it's like, like more sci-fi vibe which like really resonates for me to be able to use it as a sci-fi dinosaur, which is super cool. And this is part of a larger line of Lost Temple, which is they have a whole range of different models that you can use as different units on the tabletop. And this is just one example of one army that you can buy for you. Could, there's loads of different lines for loads of different types of models for different games, uh, different armies and different games. So take a look, and if you do want anything, use code HELLSTORM at checkout for a discount, whether that's on their Etsy store or on their website, proxywars.us. So I've left both links in the description, and if you follow those links or use code HELLSTORM or both, you're directly supporting me, and they are affiliate links, so I do get a kickback every time you make a purchase, so they, they are a really, really good way to support me, and you get cheaper models in return. It's like a it's like a win, guys, it's a win-win. <laughs> All the minis I've received have been beautifully packaged. They're all wrapped in bubble wrap in separate bags so I could like work out exactly what everything is and how it goes together. And it's all, it was all perfect. There was like no, hardly any cleanup and the print quality is super, super nice. Again, I 3D print quite a lot and I will say these are like, like superb prints. So take a look at either their Etsy store or the original website. And again, use code Hellstorm at checkout for a discount. And um, yeah, it just supports me and it supports them. And, and it's just like, it's just really good. We're all happy. You get cool toys. I get helped out, they get helped out, it's a win-win. So thanks again to Proxy Wars for sponsoring this video. They're a really good company to work with. I've really enjoyed my time working with them in the, in the past. I'm looking forward to working with them again in the future. And thanks to you guys at home for supporting me by looking at those links in the description. Anyway, back to the Eternity Watcher Bone Boy. If you do want to go from dark to light and you're trying to highlight an area, you can just add in white paint. So this is just uh, Titanium Bold White from Pro Acryl. And then what we've done is I've taken the original Nasdreg yellow and added some white into the mix. And just like, I'm just very lightly just going over the stomach on the haze point just to add a little bit of a highlight because I felt like I'd added too much color and lost some of that, that, that grassy old undercoat, you know, like the underpaint, the, the slap chop, whatever you want to call it. Like I've got lights on the top, like as an ethyl highlight and dark in the bottom, but I've gone a little bit too much. So we kind of like lost some of that depth. So now I'm adding, building the contrast back up by just adding a little bit of white and just highlighting the stomach and the hands and stuff just to be like, this is the lightest point. And then we've got like a nice gradient to dark yellow, to green, to dark green. And for this part of the miniature, that's pretty much for the airbrush uh, contrasting. So I'm just going to like block in the details as normal. And that's a good thing. Like people say like, oh, I'll get an airbrush and you'll you'll do everything. And then, oh, you can do everything with your paintbrush. But the, the best thing about having an airbrush is having the utility to use that and then go back to a brush you're not gonna be able to do everything with a paintbrush you're not gonna be able to do everything with an airbrush but having them both together working in unison is exactly what you want and again even though i've got this gradient i've got this really nice soft dark green to light green i'm still using the brush to add in even more contrast and like these scales i'm just making darker with the by applying more of the same color i'm not like mix a new color i'm just i'm just adding more of the same because again each time you apply a layer with contrast it's just a filter and you just add in a filter on a filter on a filter and eventually it's going to be darker than it was when it was to begin with. And again, we can just take our contrast color and we can mix white into it and it turns it into just a really, really thin paint, like a normal, really thin acrylic paint. And we can just edge highlight, etc. as you would as normal. So that like here, I'm highlighting the stomach of the slant or the Eternity Watcher. And I was build it, building that up slowly. Just again, it's super, super thin. And it's kind of like, it's almost like glazing highlights, but it's just because it's really thin paint, which means you can just take your time, add one. If it's not quite right, that's okay. Because as soon as you add another layer, it'll get more intense. If you, if you don't do it in the same place twice, you won't be able to notice. And it's just going to build that contrast very, very slowly and build that intensity. And that's what, that's kind of the benefit of contrast paints. And it's the benefit of contrast paints using them in this way is that you can slowly build the intens intensity by applying multiple layers. And yeah, it's, it might take longer than doing it other ways, but it's just kind of like, 
if you want to take your painting from base coat, wash, highlight to, okay, let's try and get some cool gradients. Let's get some nice highlight. Let's get some nice blends. This is kind of like the direction maybe you could take to try and do that. Like I'm not the best painter in the world. I just, I just enjoy painting and I like freestyling, you know, and this is like a fun, like these sort of projects and these sort of miniatures are really fun for that. And then here I'm using a really, really thin contrast paint as like a wash. So I'm not even using it like contrast. And I'm thinning everything with water. I'm not thinning it with like anything special. But I've taken a really thin magenta contrast. I think this was uh, Volpa, Volupa's pink or something. And I'm using it like a wash in the recesses. So I'm just applying it very thin. And if I only apply one layer, it'll be really, really thin, like a filter layer. And then if I add it again, it'll add that intensity and make it deeper and deeper until we're bringing the full color in there. And then just going back in and highlighting once again. And we get all this nice texture. We've got like a really nice gradient. We've got some brushed highlights to make it look like we haven't just airbrushed it. We've just airbrushed it with a quick highlight and a very quick wash as well. <laughs> And that's kind of like how I'd go about painting skin. But you can also use contrast to add shadow and add depth retrospectively or retroactively. Like for the chair, I don't know what to call it. It's a, th a throne, okay? The throne. The th so Eternity Watch's throne. We're spraying this with like a bone color. So I think it's like Carrick Stone or something like that. Again, I don't really worry about names of colors. I just find a color that I like and then I work with it and I mix mix highlights in there. I mix shadows in there. Uh, I think people get really like hung up on like, oh, what paint did you use exactly? But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Just like use a paint that's very similar and you won't notice it at the end of the day. Like people aren't gonna be like, whoa, that's a really cool blend. What four colors you use to get that? It's like, I don't know. It's a bone color and some brown. <laughs> so I'm like giving like a really thin layer of Carrack stone in this, in this case. Um, over the Graciel or the slap or what the, the underpaint. Um, and then what that does is our shadows are still there, but it's added a filter of color over the top. So this is just a normal acrylic paint. So we've got the shadows still that we applied with our normal oil and our dry brushes first, but we now we've got a color on the model. And what I'm doing here is taking another contrast paint. This is Skeleton Horde in particular. I like how I had a rant about name of colors and now I'm like, oh, in particular, I use this one. <laughs> <laughs> so yes yeah, so i'm like going in and spraying in shadows and contrast and um like depth back in so i'm like again i'm starting from the light color and i'm working my way rather than like using this to add color i'm using this just to add shade to add depth to back into it because like we've got we know where our shadows are but they're black which doesn't look quite right on a bone color throne thing bone throne the bone throne <laughs> so on the bone throne I'm using Skeleton Horde to spray in shadows once again. So I'm looking where, where our, our depth is from the null Nile that we did previously and going, okay, that needs to be brown, not black, which is because it doesn't quite look right. And we're just spraying in and again, and using it like a filter. So the, le the less we do, the lighter it's going to look and we just wait for it to dry, add another layer and it's just going to look much more intense. And then essentially just doing this with multiple colors. So I go from, I think, Skeleton Horde and then giving like, like that really nice like burnt umber look. And then going to Garagax Sewer, which is a really, really nice color. It's essentially Agrax Earth Shade on steroids. And then moving to Saigor Brown, which is like black brown. So you have to be really careful with this one. Thin it really nicely and just be very gentle with it because it will just stain everything. It's just it's just a deep, deep brown. And then once we've got we've got our shading, we can go in with some Agrax Earth Shade and just pin, pin wash it as you, you would like a normal paint job. But you've got like this really nice depth where it's like you've got the deep recess and it blends out in like a gradient to the, the, the bone Carrick Stone color. And then we can get the three paints on our palette. We've got the Saigor Brown, we've got the Carrick Stone, we've got the white. And we can mix up some highlights, you know. We can take some Carrick Stone and we can blend up back to our mid-tone and then go from uh, our mid-tone to our highlight by adding some white and just get some edge highlights. And at this point, again, I'm freestyling. It doesn't matter. Like, it's, it's just... It, like, I'm not comparing this to anything. I'm just I'm just playing around, you know? And at this point, I was like, I think the mid-tones have taken too much of the shading away and the highlights are way too bright. But that's okay. We've highlighted it. We'll just keep going. And we've got our, we know where our shadows are. Because essentially, like, with the airbrush, because you're always going to get that blooming effect. When I've tried to spray some of the shadows, I've kind of, like, oversprayed a little bit. And the shadows are now just, like, huge. And it kind of looks a little bit unnatural. So what I'm actually going to do is, afterwards... I'm going to go back in with Saigon Brown after I've highlighted it and then filter the highlights and fill, like add shadows back in, even more shadows. And what this does is because we're adding a very thin layer over our highlight, it's going to go from like white, essentially, where we've highlighted it at the top. And then where the blending, because we're like spraying from the corners and the deepest parts, it's going to like blend it. So we're going to, our, our physical line highlight is going to go from white to brown. But then our deepest point, which is already dark, is going to get even darker. So 
it's going to retain the highlight. The main body is going to be more shadowy. So rather than having a dark brown and then a white highlight, it's a it's a highlight that's a blend because we've sprayed contrast over the top like a filter. We we love the word filter. This is the best word this video could use to be describe what I'm doing. But that's that's the point. Is like we're spraying in shading back onto the flat of the miniature. So like we go from rather than just all mid tone and highlight, we get mid tone highlight and shadow. And then the highlight that we've put straight across the middle to because it's like a corner, we're going to spray again. So we get deeper shadows, but also the highlight, which is brighter, gets knocked back a bit. So it's more like a more neutral highlight rather than like a really stark highlight. And you can see that on the miniature. You can see that it goes from our line going across the middle, it goes from like a light, like a lighter brown than the shadow, but it's like a blend up to a white. And it makes it look like we blended the highlight where we have it. We've drawn a white liner, then sprayed it. <laughs> It's just like hobby cheating, you know, retroactively adding shadows is like it's really good for and and again, you can kind of because it's so thin, you can blend everything and that's what you you don't want really start contrast or shadow. Well, you don't want really start like this is the contrast area, then a harsh line and this is mid tone. You, you've got to blend it and this is like a really nice way to do it because filtering best word contrast paint filtering filtering 101 filtering massive. And then, and then afterwards, if you, um, again, we can, we can do the same thing. This is for the OSL. So we're using, um, a blue contrast to essentially blend our colors together. So I've, I've used OSL, uh, or object source lighting by making this lightning glow, etc. And then I'm using like a mid-tone blue to kind of like blend them together. So if I feel like it's, oh, it goes from dark blue to white too much then i'll i'll like blend it together with like a contrast paint because i'm doing that filtering again i'm making the shadows deeper but i'm making the highlights duller or adding more saturation in and and rather than having it what blown out you know it's actually like for a camera camera buffs like reducing the exposure by adding more saturation you know i'm i'm adding more hue of the same hue but bumping the the amount of gold well, i don't know. <sighs> I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> but then also, if I feel like I've gone too much or gone too bright, I can go in with a deeper blue. I can I can add in more shadows again. And I can also use it just to spray OSL because it's really thin. We want we want to um, mimic like light bouncing off this lightning. Where it's like reflective because it's a lightning and it's holding the, the bone thrown. So we can use the thin blue filter to be like, okay, we'll spray a bit on the bottom. We'll spray a bit onto the flowers on the base and just you know recreate like a, a mimic a light lighting effect you know and just like add depth or add highlights and and if you don't want to do either you can add mid-tone and blend it all together which is really hard to do with a brush but really easy to do with really thin paint and even easier to do with contrast paint and then again like once you've got all the miniatures together you can just use really thin paint or really thin contrast just to apply like lighting effects onto the back of things if you got like so we're pretending the light source behind the slant and it's like shining onto his shiny shoulder pad so we're just adding a little bit of blue there just to add a little bit of you know lighting and i appreciate this is like a stream of consciousness type video but you can do this with multiple things like you can also do it with like a metallic undercoat to get like more of a um candy esque effect you could go over with a gloss varnish afterwards like on this alpha legionary and yeah basically at the end of the day just because something is sold to you to do a purpose doesn't mean that's the other thing it can do and there are lots of ways you can use contrast whether that's with a brush through an airbrush or something else so Basically, I'm just saying go and experiment. And again, like this video, I didn't I didn't script it at all. What I basically did was put the footage together and just talked over it because I thought that'd be the best way to get the information across and not teach you how to suck an egg. I don't want you to be like, well, this is how to paint an eternity watcher from Lost Temple. No, it's a it's a video, like a thought experiment. Like do whatever you want and practice and try things out that you've never tried before. And maybe this video has inspired you to buy an airbrush or has inspired you to just pour this into the airbrush spray it and see what happens and maybe you'll get a cool effect or maybe you won't and that's okay too sometimes it's okay to mess up and make a mess when we just start again i actually painted this miniature twice because the first time i painted it uh, i lost all the footage and i think the paint job was probably worse than this one and i don't think i got my point across quite as well either so that's basically what i want to say this is like a a sunday thoughts uh like walk about and find out <laughs>
And um, yeah, it's um, it's nice to paint something a little bit different, a cool type of miniature. I love painting loads of different stuff and it can get quite monotonous painting big armies and stuff like that. I speak about it on stream all the time. It's really difficult for me to paint big army projects, but for, to paint like one miniature, like really cool. That's something I really, really enjoy and maybe you can too. And if whether that's going to Proxy Wars and have a look at their products, you know, again, if you use the, uh, the links in the description, it helps me out and it helps them out, obviously, and they're a great company. So the more, the more we can support them, the better. And uh, again, use code Hellstorm at checkout to get a discount. And uh, yeah, thanks so again to Proxy Wars for sponsoring this video. And I do really, really appreciate them. They are great to work with, and hopefully, we can work again in the future. And thank you to you guys at home for watching. That's like the easiest way to support me. But the best way to support me is becoming a member. I want to say a thank you to my members now. Thank you very much to Inside Out Miniature Painting, Justice Sanders, Jen Quarters, Forge Father Brad, Ricardo, James the Wild, Crack Attacker, Ichan01. Peter Duff, Ian, Pedro, Araujo, Kev the Stab, Tom Warden, Lambo Paints, Patrick Barron, Miles Hatch, Techwall, Jason Rockhill, Desi There, Tom Robinson, Jason Fox, and Jay Taylor. Thank you very much for becoming a member. You can click join down below to become a member as well if you want to see your name on screen and you be an absolute babe. And you can be awesome. Thank you. Love you. So that's it. Thanks to Proxy Wars. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for becoming a member. If you haven't already, do please do. Check out the links, do all the things, and I'll catch you next time.